Now here's the quick change gearbox from the Monarch lathe. I would like to not have to disassemble it any further than this and I think that everything can get pretty clean from this point. This is the output shaft uh, with the tumbler gears for the different speeds and all that seems to shift pretty well. There was a lot of chips and gunk built up in the bottom but I got all that out. Uh, the intermediate shaft and the input shaft are out. I'll show you those. And at this state I can probably get the knobs off and do a good job wire brushing and cleaning the outside of the casting to be repainted. Here's the um, bottom shaft. This is the one where the, the gear and the shift lever slide back and forth to change your speeds. Tapered roller bearings at both ends, ball bearing in the center. And we got this crazy casting that holds two idler gears, both with bearings. I'll probably replace those. And the intermediate shaft also slides back and forth uh, the gears for different speeds. All of this will get cleaned up better, painted, get the cast iron parts painted, and we'll start reassembly. And this is the end of the uh, quick change gearbox. And this lever, I believe, selects between the feed rod and the uh, lead screw for threading versus feeds. Now here's the lever from my quick change gearbox on the Monarch. Everything's cleaned off. You got the two bronze bushings that uh, allow that to slide on the shaft. There's an idler gear that meshes with the uh, driven gear and then this will rotate and engage with the change gears to give you your different speeds and feeds. Um, this is the index pin that holds it into the um, notch to, to give it the gear mesh and that is broken obviously both uh, here and here. There was a projecting boss that stuck out to hold the plunger. So got a piece of uh, ductile iron that uh, I'm going to cut and Steve can make a half cylinder to braze on here and then rebore. We're going to rebore this at three quarters of an inch. This is a half inch to <clears throat> pick up, you know, keep that original hole center. And then we've got a part drawn up um, that has all the correct geometry to, to hold the plunger. That would be an interesting piece to hold to do a kind of machining on this. Cast, there's no, no square surfaces to anything. It'll be interesting to see how Steve comes up with a way to uh, pick, up the, pick up the center here and machine it. Some of you might remember this bushing, these set of bushings that Steve Summers made me for the hold downs of the engine. I got the, uh, ball, the acorn style nuts from McMaster at about $17 a piece and so that's what that is going to look like holding down the, uh, the engine, the Rustin Hornsby, if I can get this to focus. There we go. That's going to be a nice looking uh, nice looking hold down stud and spread that load of the 5 8 bolt in through the one inch hole uh, that's cast in the in the engine frame. Let's take this piece of uh, I think it's inch and a quarter ductile iron from McMaster over to the peerless hacksaw and cut off a two inch chunk for Steve to use. I'm going to keep the rest of this one for it to play with on the lathe. Alright, I got my inch and a quarter ductile iron round. I'm going to cut off two inches for Steve to use uh, as a repair piece. And I'm going to keep the rest for experimentation on the lathe. You got a, I think it's a 14 TPI blade on the Peerless Power Hacksaw. Let's see how it does. contact the moving part. And I think 
think you're supposed to cut cast iron dry, now that I think of it. You gotta help it out sometimes. 